I don't know about the beginning of time, but certainly since the beginning of the church, there are clear examples of church leaders hiding things from people. Hi everyone, Nemo here. Welcome back to the channel, and as always, if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and stick around. Today is number three in my series of videos exploring the honesty of the LDS leadership. You know, the folks we have to sustain or we can't enter the temple. And this time we are looking at M. Russell Ballard. So let's get to it. During the 2019 Missionary Leadership Training Conference, the report on M. Russell Ballard's talk gave us the following. Some missionaries have felt pressure to invite people to be baptized during the first lesson or even the first contact. These missionaries have felt that inviting people to be baptized the very first time they meet them demonstrated the missionary's faith and supports their thinking that inviting people to be baptized early is what is expected, he said. Other missionaries have felt that an invitation to be baptized early allows them to promptly separate the wheat from the tares. In this case, some see the baptismal invitation as a sifting tool. Church leaders don't know where these practices began but it was never our intention to invite people to be baptized before they had learned something about the gospel, felt the Holy Ghost, and had been properly prepared to accept a lifelong commitment to follow Jesus Christ, said President Ballard. Well, I know where it started. It's been in the missionary manuals since at least 1986 that the invitation to baptism should be made very early on. It's in Preach My Gospel to this day. It's in the first lesson, as directed by the Spirit. During this or any other lesson, do not hesitate to invite people to be baptised and confirmed. I suppose you could point out the caveat about the Spirit. But then when would the Spirit not tell you to ask someone to be baptised? Try asking your mission president that one and seeing what answer you get. And the caveat about the Spirit wasn't even in the original 2004 version. And if that's not clear enough, the companion manual to preach my gospel, the first 12 weeks, says it explicitly. I don't know why Ballard feels the need to try and shift the blame for this practice away from the leaders of the church and onto the missionaries, but that is certainly what he's trying to do. Just look at the line where he says supports their thinking that inviting people to be baptized early is what is expected. The only reason they think that is because it's in the manuals. If you think you know why he's trying to shift the blame, please let me know in the comments. Then we have this gem where M. Russell Ballard tries to gaslight the members into thinking the church has never hidden anything. Some are uh, saying that the church has been hiding the fact that there is more than one version of the, of the first vision, which is uh, just a, a, a f not true. The facts are we don't study, we don't go back and search what has been said on the subject. For example, Dr. James B. Allen of the BYU in 1970, he, he, he produced a, uh, an article for the church magazines explaining all about the different versions of the first vision. How long ago was that article? 1970. That was we, back in 1970. So been hiding that for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, it's, this, it's this, this, this idea that the church is hiding something that, which we would have to say as two apostles who have covered the world and know the history of the church and know the integrity of the First Presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve from the beginning of time, there has been no attempt on the part in any way of the church leaders trying to hide anything from anybody. Now we've had the Joseph Smith papers. We didn't have those where they were in our hands now. And, they're, and so we're learning more about the prophet Joseph, as wonderful we are. There's volumes of it. There's so much of in those books now in my bookshelf. Maybe you've read them all, but I haven't got them. Yeah. I'm a slow that reader. That much. So <laughs> just trust us wherever you are in the world, and you share this message with anyone else who raises the question about the church not being transparent. We're as transparent as we know how to be in telling the truth. We have to do that. That's the Lord's way. This is a lie, because the church did hide an account. And when he says... There's this idea 
that the church is hiding something that, which we would have to say as two apostles who have covered the world. This is an appeal to authority. They're making their claim by invoking their positions as apostles to try and counter using an appeal to authority. The facts do not support their position, so they attempt to shore it up by re-emphasizing their authority in this situation. Joseph Fielding Smith had the 1832 account of the first vision removed from a journal and then stashed away in his vault in the 1930s, and it was reunited some decades later. You can see this in the Joseph Smith papers. So the statement that the integrity of the first presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve from the beginning of time, there has been no attempt on the part in any way of the church leaders trying to hide anything from anybody. Is simply untrue. And since he states to know the integrity and know the history of the church, he would know this is the case. So he was either overstating his level of expertise or lying about the church's attempt to hide things. Now at this point, real quick, I just want to give honorable mention to Elder Oaks's little quip. How long ago was that article? 1970. That was we, back in 1970. So have been hiding that for a long time. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, but it, well, the 1832 account that the church has been accused of hiding is from, well, 1832. So to state that an article was written about it in 1970 leaves 138 years before that where you haven't provided evidence that it was talked about. And as I've already mentioned, we know it was hidden for at least some of that time. Ergo, the church has made an attempt to hide it and your point is moot. And then Elder Ballard really puts his foot in it by stating, From the beginning of time, there has been no attempt on the part in any way of the church leaders trying to hide anything from anybody. Since the beginning of time, there has been no attempt to hide anything from anybody. What? What about when Joseph lied about polygamy? Joseph denied being a polygamist in May 1844, nine years after taking his first plural wife and many plural wives later. He said, What a thing it is for a man to be accused of committing adultery and having seven wives when I can only find one. Was that not an attempt to hide his polygamous practices from the public? When he had the Nauvoo Expositor destroyed because it was about to print an expose on his polygamy. Again, is that not an attempt to hide something from public view? I don't know about the beginning of time, but certainly since the beginning of the church, there are clear examples of church leaders hiding things from people. So when he says, Just trust us. I find it incredibly difficult to do so. Keep the eyes of the mission on the leaders of the church. We will not and cannot lead you astray. This is another demonstrably false lie. I addressed this with Russell M. Nelson, but I will reiterate. When Russell M. Nelson said, To remove the Lord's name from the Lord's church is a major victory for Satan. That means that this, Ever since when I have seen the word Mormon used in the media to describe us in a newspaper, a magazine, or book, or whatever, there flashes into my mind his statement, which has become my motto. Mormon means more good. We may not be able to change the nickname, but we can make it shine with added luster. And this. Dare to be a Mormon. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. Dare to make it known. And definitely this. The church brought the I Am A Mormon campaign to Times Square this past June. Billboards and signs on taxi tops and inside subways featured images of many of the members' colorful profiles, along with a statement, I am a Mormon. Our major victories for Satan, propagated by the two prophets before Russell M. Nelson, spending millions of dollars encouraging the membership of the church to embrace a moniker which, by doing so, grants a victory for Satan, is certainly leading the members astray. So either they led us astray, and M. Russell Ballard is lying when he said prophets won't, or Russell M. Nelson is lying when he says it's a major victory for Satan. Of course, I don't want to create a false binary, because they could both be lying. I don't believe Russell M. Nelson when he says it's a major victory for Satan. And equally, I don't believe M. Russell Ballard when he says that prophets won't lead us astray. The idea that our current church leaders will not lead us astray is nonsense and demonstrably false. Historically, we have been led astray. Eleven prophets taught a doctrine regarding race and the priesthood, which is now disavowed by the current church as theories. 
11 prophets just disavowed and yet we are somehow meant to believe that these current ones will never lead us astray. It's utter nonsense. They would be better off just admitting their fallibility, asking forgiveness when they get things wrong, and just moving on. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And so you don't miss anything, be sure to subscribe. Bye now.